Hello, it's Kay here, and we're going to talk about guided meditation today. And I'm here with Will Everett, who knows a lot about meditation and hypnotherapy, not to mention physical and mental health more generally. And I know that he loves helping people. I've had first-hand experience of the effectiveness of Will's meditation sessions over a number of months now. He gathered us all up and made us feel better in so many ways. Um, so I'm very happy to have you here today to tell us about your work. Welcome, Will. Thank you so much. I feel privileged that you've invited me to do this today. So thank you oh, very much. It's lovely. So let me start by asking you to tell us who you are and what you do. Yes. So as Kay said, my name is Will Everett. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, an NLP behavioural coach and a mental health first aider. And I help lots of people with many different issues uh, and I help them overcome these issues so that they can live a healthy, happy life. And I always say that I help people with the issues they have uh, because I believe the, they aren't the issue themselves. I believe that people aren't broken. I don't fix people. I fix problems. And how I do that is through one to one sessions using hypnosis and behavioral coaching and talking therapy. And as uh, Kay mentioned, the, uh, the classes that I run, the meditation with hypnosis classes that I know that you, you enjoy, Kay, don't you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Very much so. Um, I'm sure, Will, there are some people out there who don't actually know what, what, what meditation is and they've never tried mm -hmm. it before. Can you, can you yeah. tell us what it is and what happens? Yes. Yeah, so I like to describe it as after we've had a hard day at work or a busy workout for example something where we've strenu been strenuous physically we do like to relax so after a long day we might take a hot bath or a shower and then sit down and relax and let ourselves uh, you know really sink deeper into a physical relaxation and that the meditation that I do with hypnosis is very much similar with your mind so it allows you to relax stop taking in so much information and process everything that you've been through in a safe space. I, I always remember that is a really important part of your uh, description and making us all feel relaxed, this thing about you're safe here with me and you say it a number of times in the session and I, I sort of thought absolutely wonderful because I think we all need to, to, to hear that these days where we're feeling quite um, uncertain of the future and so many things are, are not usual for us so I, I think I really do appreciate that. How long have you been practicing and, and Will what actually made you start and set off in this direction? Oh, great question. I started in, um, I qualified first of all in 2014 and it was uh, my, my certificate in clinical hypnotherapy and later on in that year I became an NLP master practitioner so I can do, I can help people on a clinical level. Why did I get into it? I used to work for Waitrose actually in retail and I did that for quite a number of years and the more responsibility I got the more I took on as part of my role and I recognised that I needed to delegate some tasks to other people in order to manage the, the whole section that I had on a daily basis and I often described it as a bit like plate spinning where you can go around and spin all the plates the areas of responsibilities but after a while the plates start to wobble and you've got to go around again and if you spend too long at one plate the others start to topple so I noticed that by building other people up and training them how to spin the plates for me that kept them all spinning longer and over time I actually recognized that as I gave uh, delegated responsibility to people that they actually quite enjoyed it so it wasn't just a benefit for me, it was also a real benefit for them. I noticed that they felt empowered and happier in their roles. And I quite enjoyed delegating to them as well. I enjoyed seeing them succeed and I enjoyed seeing other people be successful. And that became my passion to help people to become successful and I would reap the rewards of that to seeing them achieve their different goals. So that's where my desire to coach and develop other people came from. And then as I worked my way up the ladder in Waitrose, uh, there was an opportunity to do a management course, which I did. And part of that was about coaching. My mentor on this course suggested I do a coaching course because she said, you're really good at reading people. So I jumped at the chance. 
And the course that I'd set on to do was the NLP. It wasn't available for some months. So she said to me, why don't you do the hypnotherapy course? Now, hypnosis, usually we're used to that stage entertainment hypnosis. And I thought, well, it's always fascinated me. Um, since being a child, I watched a fictional film on a lady being regressed into a past life. Ooh. And it was always fascinating to me. So I jumped at the chance of doing the clinical hypnosis course, which I did, and then led on to the master practitioner in NLP. Can and you I just, um, uh, Will, can you just, uh, I, I mean, I use this phrase all the time, you know, NLP, NLP, but a lot of people don't know, you know, what, what it actually means and, and what that is. I don't want to, to miss out on, you know, why, oh, how you yeah. ended up doing what you're doing, but um, do explain NLP. Yes, so NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. So it's our mind, our language, and the strategies or structures that we set up. So part of it could be a phobia that starts off as a, a small fear and then grows into a larger phobia. It could be restricting or limiting beliefs or behaviors. And I like to describe it as this. So your restricting or belief, uh, restricting belief or behavior or like a phobia will be like a Jenga block. You know, that game where you pull the blocks out until it comes crashing down. So that will be your restricting uh, belief or behavior. And it's my job to pull out the bricks using different coaching techniques till it comes crashing down. And then we build a new positive structure between us mm. to help you achieve what you want to achieve in life. So it's all about the strategies that we set up to uh, go about our day and sometimes we don't even realize what we've done it might be i believe that all behavior is designed towards protection and security so it's all about staying alive staying safe so it's my job to make sure you still feel safe as you said to create new positive beliefs and behaviors well um i mean as you're talking there first of all I really think this idea that you were describing when you were working with Trose, um, yeah. about, you know, you obviously have a talent just as a manager um, and an encourager of people that comes across in your session hugely because you treat everyone the same, you, the quiet people, you encourage them to speak up if they'd like mm -hmm. to. I think you, that's just something about the person that you are. And, and this idea that you were naturally drawn to uh, this side of, of coaching and it, it's blossomed into something much bigger is of real interest to me because I think that manage, management and real on the ground experience must have been so helpful and helped you see this as a practice that absolutely anybody um, could get benefits from. You don't have to understand what any of these words mean um really it, it is something that could be beneficial for men for women um for for anyone really um no matter what their experience mm. of life and um so when did you uh, decide to completely change from your job and to become a kind of full-time uh sort of practitioner of helpful uh, therapies <laughs> I, um, I left Waitrose uh, in 2017. The opportunity came to take some uh, voluntary redundancy. And I thought I've done this most of my life. Let me try something different. So part of the redundancy package meant they gave us some funds to be retrained in another area. And so I uh, did a personal training course. I'm very uh, passionate about my own fitness as well. And I got a job uh, managing a couple of gyms for a different for energy fitness which is where the connection is and during that time I became a mental health first aider and I qualified uh, in I did a diploma in clinical hypnotherapy which allowed me to do even more clinical uh, clinical uh, you know, sessions if you like I'll go into that in more detail in a moment and then um, as lockdown came in last year the uh, I was asked to do some online courses uh, classes as you know indeed indeed and, uh, that's, I started started the energy that's how we met yes um, indeed and, and then, you were doing lots of sessions as well which really yes. was quite impressive yeah absolutely I started for a, a trend fit which is a great one another great online fitness platform and I started in lockdown 
Um, and then by November, I was doing them for energy fitness because of the franchise, there's, they're different companies. So I was doing them for energy fitness. I was doing six classes a week. And um, that's how I got to meet all you lovely people. And if such uh, great sessions, I, I get so much from them. I really enjoy the interaction. You see my energy levels spark. I do, I do three on a Sunday night. And by the end <laughs> of it, I'm like, oh, I've got to get rid that's of this in, energy. Somehow. That's incredible though, Will, though, because I think for all of us who are on the receiving end of your uh, guided meditation, I'm just going to talk about a little bit about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. I think we all feel that it is, you know, you are giving us so much, but it's wonderful to hear that that actually is a, is a kind of two way street, a bit like yoga, you know, yoga instructors always think yeah. that there's a mutual exchange of benefits. Yeah. But yeah. I, I also love your uh, style because your meditation lasts about 40 minutes and you've got a great voice for it it's it's actually very calming and you have a wonderful way of delivering I'm assuming that that was partly trained but it's also who you are yeah. um a lot of the, what I would say, sorry to interrupt you is not trained it's something that I have done even from storytelling to my little nephew I noticed the peaks and trough of the tone will emphasize different words I'll add rhyme into it and I wasn't taught that I just that that just comes across I, I do you know it, it it's wonderful so many of these things that you're telling us about I mean it's obviously just a natural thing within you and you're going with that which is actually quite encouraging because I think I think it really is important to go with what feels right for you can I ask you um well, one of the things that I really enjoy very much about your sessions is that you combine it with hypnotherapy, which for some people is a bit scary, but actually mm -hmm. it's not at all scary. And to me, I don't know if this is the right thing, but the hypnotherapy side of things is about uh, sort of planting good, positive thoughts in your mind. So it's yes. not anything woo-woo, it's literally, um, you know, sort of giving you these thought patterns that are very beneficial is that right yes absolutely I think it's important to uh, kind of forget about what we might be used to seeing on the tv for an entertainment purpose and what I will say to anybody that's that's listening or watching is that I can't make you do anything you don't want to do so to the point of um, you know if you came to me and you'd like to quit smoking I can help you do that but if you resist and don't really want to quit it won't work we have to have a mutual uh, you know target or journey together that we take and you want what I want and vice versa and we're heading to towards that together and yes uh, the hypnosis uh, I do like to describe it as um, the doorway between conscious and unconscious minds is opened and while you're in that wonderful feeling of relaxation your mind will go diving into the unconscious. And that's where we, be, we um, our, our unconscious is where we store all of our memories, everything we've ever learnt. And it's where we bury trauma as well. So we can do the more clinical things, the more um, deeper things to, to solve trauma, help trauma, or on a more generic level, which I do in the class where it's all about relaxation and making sure that all those positive changes are accessed if you like and uh, enjoyed by everybody and what what do people normally um come for help with when they come to you for meditation sessions i mean i, I could really do with a few sessions on um, my obsession yeah. with chocolate but <laughs> that's I, a problem as you can imagine <laughs> but you know so that could be a popular one but what what kinds of things most attracts um, people to meditation with you okay um so meditation is usually about relaxation if you mean what do they come to me for for one-to-one -one sessions it's usually the most common thing now is uh anxiety or low self-worth they're the things they're the, the issues if you like that i fix mm. most common yeah and mainly from men mainly from women uh not that men don't have it they're just less likely to talk about it Yes, indeed, indeed. How how does meditation and hypnosis 
actually help with anxiety? Do, does it physically affect your brain or what, what, what happens there? So it, it is about, so I, I like to describe anxiety as having, getting caught in a whirlwind of thoughts that create anxious feelings. Because if you look at CBT methods uh, that I use as well, it's thoughts create feelings that influence behaviours. So if you're feeling anxiety, the first question to ask yourself could possibly be, what am I thinking about? So by calming the thoughts, then that will help reduce the anxiety. Now, even in the in the classes that uh, that I do, they're they're quite generic. I don't mention anybody's name, of course, because they're everybody's different. But I have had feedback from people to say their anxiety is reduced because it's regular intervals within their week where they're bringing down their their anxiety levels and relaxing even more. And you you possibly know that you, you get a better better night's sleep as well afterwards. It's quite calming. So to do that more often helps reduce those anxiety levels the change in the brain uh, yes we do experience chemical changes in the brain um, i do a lot of work around how the brain works with regards to the fight or flight system and how it works and then how we can reduce it if we're going to work together on the issues that you'd like to to work through and and of course you just slipped in a little cbt there which i'd like you to to just tell us what that means yeah, so CBT is cognitive behavioral therapy. And that, as I said, is the theory that thoughts control feelings that influence behaviors. So if you're caught in negative thoughts, it's only going to cause negative feelings. And so to get yourself feeling good, positive thoughts are crucial. So I will work with people to find out what they've currently got in their life that makes them feel good, do more of that. Uh, what they've got in their life that makes them feel bad, do less of that and create new positive thoughts, feelings and behaviour. Very clear. I have some friends, Will, who have really tried and tried, um, but they just can't get into meditation. For some reason, it doesn't work for them. What, why mm -hmm. do you think meditation doesn't seem to work for everyone? Or is it just that they, they really need to, to do it a different way or something? Yes, I mean, I think the most common feedback I'd get with people that are new in the class, they worry too much about what they think they should be experiencing. <laughs> yes. No, I didn't hear you. I did hear you. I felt like I fell asleep. I wasn't sure whether I should. And so with meditation, when we can do it on our own, the most important thing is just to relax. And if you hear it or not, if you fall asleep or not, Everything is how you should be experiencing it. You will possibly know, remember that I often say, expect the unexpected and accept the unexpected. Whatever happens to you tonight is right for you tonight. And so every class can be different depending on what you're thinking about and how you're feeling. The most important thing is to just let what happens happen because I, I will use another analogy here where I often describe it as this. Imagine you're in the ocean and you've got a beach ball and the water is at waist height. So the uh, below surface level represents your unconscious mind and above the water represents conscious. Now this beach ball full of pressure is your pressure, is your issue, is your stress, if you like. And the harder and faster we try and push it down into the unconscious by pushing it to the back of our mind, putting it under the carpet, in a box, however you'd like to describe it, the more we try and push it away, the harder and the faster it comes popping back to the surface and smacks us in the face. So what I do is I allow the ball to rise gently to the surface. We pull out the valve, allow the pressure to escape gradually in a safe way, and then it sinks below the surface at a safe pace. So what my suggestion would be is, that in meditation do not think there's any rules just allow your mind to relax and if you hear it or not if you fall asleep or not whatever happens to you tonight is right for you tonight <laughs> yes i love that you've got a lot of phrases that I do, make <laughs> you that, no but actually they're all make you feel either more relaxed or more accepting of whatever is happening to you and the stage that you're at. Because obviously there are some people probably in your 
uh, classes, the group classes online, who have been mm. doing this for a very long time and other people are, are brand new to it. And I think this idea that you keep talking about, about, about kind of um, accepting the way things are and actually just coming at it with a really positive mindset is really, really helpful to get the best out of your sessions. And that, that was one of the things I've obviously done lots of meditation sessions over many years, but I, I think you're very down to earth. And I think that is something that's really important with all, all these, you know, um, abbreviated, you know, letters, meaning all these, um, yeah. you know, different things, which are not that clear. You've explained it very, very well. Thank you so much. The most important thing for me, which was installed to me by a, a, a senior manager, a line manager for me, my choice, was the most important thing for me is authenticity. So what do you see with me? This is me. This is me. And I don't try and pretend to be someone I'm not because I believe that you will feel it if I'm not. So I'm just myself. Now, of course, I have to be professional. I am anyway. But my personality comes across and I want to see your personality and I value you and I value every person that participates in my class because, um, you know, they're, they're giving their time and their energy to me. And it's very, very much appreciated. And um, one of the things I'd like to do, to just give um, people a, a sense, can you describe, I mean, I could do it, but I think it'd be great for you to describe what happens in classes because I'm always thinking about you give quite a bit of flexibility, but mm -hmm. um, you guide people to to somewhere positive. Um, yes. Can you say a bit about what happens mm -hmm. in the class? Yeah, so as soon as the class starts, we always have a catch up. Don't we make sure everybody's OK? I usually try and have a bit of a, a joke as well, make everybody laugh. And, and that's me. That's my personality. But over the time, I recognise that actually that helps to clear the stress away before we get relaxed you see so it does have its benefits although that wasn't the primary purpose of it so then everybody gets into position and I always recommend laying down sofa or bed because then you can fully relax and uh, then it's about we within with hypnosis it's about an induction uh, where you, well, I get you to close your eyes you're listening to the music I give a bit of my safety prompts where we talk about you know if you hear me or not that's okay if you want to have a wiggle about that's okay as well mm -hmm. I tell you that I'm going to count down from 10 to 1 and as the numbers drop down you feel relaxed I then take you to your favorite place of relaxation so it could be somewhere imaginary or not and then when you're relaxed we do more of the therapy where at the moment, the, the theme is we're going into a control room to change in a positive way your feelings and then an opportunity to deliver a message to yourself of encouragement and then bringing you. So th then there's the affirmations. So real positive affirmations bring you back out one to ten up. Make sure everybody's OK at the end. Another laugh joke. Make sure everybody's feeling <laughs> good. And then good night, everybody. So. That's how it is. I do take a lot of care to look after people and make sure they're OK. Yes, you do. You do. Um, it's, it is a serious business, but um, actually there are sometimes um, not just your sense of humour, but there are funny aspects to the work. I mean, I've certainly been in sessions where, you know, we've been really relaxing well. And suddenly there are um, sirens going or babies crying or pets jumping up. I mean, can yeah. you tell me what funny things have happened to you, Will? Oh, uh, too many. I too mean, many. <laughs> for me, it's, I'm very relaxed. But when you're all relaxed, when you're all with your eyes closed, I'm quite tense if there's a noise. And I think, oh, I just need to make sure that everything's quiet. But yes, I remember once I'd left my, my window open and a siren was going by and I had to say, and if you hear the siren, then you'll relax even more. And I was, Ooh, yeah. Um, I often see uh, pets run in front, cats especially, when you look to see in the camera what's going on. And I, I remember looking at one lady's, because I scan and make sure everybody's okay for the entire class. I remember looking and there was this giant cat face. <laughs> and I was like, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah lots of things lots and lots of things yeah. children are great when they come to the session usually fall asleep 
and <laughs> uh, yeah, loads of different things. And then, of course, it's the stories at the end where you all share your experiences with me at the end. And that's my favourite part because mm. I love to hear how everybody's feeling and, and getting on. And some people have some amazing experiences when they're really, really deep in, in, uh, you know, in relaxation. Some of them quite funny. Uh, so yes, yeah like... indeed indeed and you build up a relationship with some of the, the regulars i was just going to say something about that though because you you'll know about this um you know sometimes um people uh, don't maybe they're not particularly extrovert and um they they really just want to come to a session relax and experience it as if they were there just with you and the collective group of people are all just really quiet but actually what was great is that um, I'm one of those people I don't put my camera on and I, I sometimes feel guilty about it but I think you're very very flexible because I think you accept that, that everyone's different yeah. and sometimes you know they might prefer to just put a little chat rather than actually having a one-to-one -one. but you are very good at that where the people want to to describe their experience and actually see what they got out of the session. But I do like your flexibility there because it made me feel a bit more comfortable. Not yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Well, look, you are participating, but I do, I like to make sure everybody's okay. And you'll know that I'll say, look, if you don't want to turn your camera on or your microphone, you just put it in the, because there's a chat box, isn't there, that you can just, and you do, you put a message, hi, how are you? And then at the end, that was great, thank you. Because there is a safety element. I want to make sure everybody is feeling okay. And there's a group of people that love to join in on the banter and I talk to them all the time and that's okay. And then there's a group of people that I've never spoken to in any capacity and that's okay too. The bottom line is this isn't about me. This is about you having the best experience that's possible for you. And if you want to join in with the talk, that's great. And if you don't, that's great too. Well, how do you choose um, uh, two questions really in one? Um, I adore the music that you pick because it's always going on in the background to your, fo to your voice. Um, how often should we meditate and how do you choose your music? So the recommended amount of uh, meditation is two lots of 15 minutes a day. Um, I would say just make it ecological for you. Make it fit within your lifestyle. I think once you see the benefits, then you might do it more. Some people don't like to do it on their own. They prefer come to my class. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. What I would say is if anybody doesn't do it, give it a try because you will begin to feel the benefits of it. So a daily dose of meditation is great, but it doesn't have to be that long. It could just be the 20 minutes before you go to sleep at night. So my recommendation would be no TV, no phone, at least an hour before you switch off the light for bed. Why don't you put some music on perhaps to uh, to kind of drift off with your meditation? Well, that's, I, what I, that, that's great. I, I have to say, I did a session with you yesterday and that was probably the best sleep I've had in quite a few days last night. So appreciate that. Um, even though your training uh, will, it may have been similar to other people. It seems to me that every single practitioner is, is unique and yes. there might be different styles of guided meditation too, which reflects your personality. Um, you know, what, what is it you would say if I was to ask you, you know, what is it about your sessions that you would say, this is why you should join my sessions, because I, I obviously have lots of good reasons, but what do you think is unique about yours? So uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of comparing myself to others. What I will say, as you've asked, is the uniqueness for me. Um, first of all, I am my authentic self. I'm not trying to be anybody else. Uh, and behind that is a general, uh, you know, a, a, a huge passion to help other people. Okay, I really, um, this is not a money making exercise for me. I do charge so that I can do it full time. I'm not looking to become rich, rich. I'm definitely not looking to become famous. I definitely do this because I genuinely want to help other people. 
And, uh, you know, there is, for me, I don't take myself or life too seriously. So there is a bit of a laugh and a joke as well. I believe that we should be able to lighten the mood wherever possible. And when something is serious, I take it seriously. But my sessions are about a community feel and bringing everybody together. So where some online classes would be, hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? And then there's no interaction. I encourage everybody to interact with each other. And I might be the central hub that they all go to, but there are interactions between everybody. So it's really important for me that there's a family or community feel and that we all feel comfortable and we all feel connected. And there's, you know, some to laugh at the, at the start, some a bit of light relief at the start and some at the end as well. And then making sure that the words I use and the session itself, it runs as smoothly as possible so that you get the most out of it. Mm. Well, um, just before uh, we end, I just want to ask, Will, how can people find you? And is there a sample of what you do anywhere? So if you find me, I mainly run my business through Instagram, which is Will Life Coach PT, Will Life Coach PT. And there are samples on there of me doing a, a little bit of, of hypnosis. It is something I do have planned as well. It's usually in a live chat. And on my page, it's a mixture of testimonials with live chats with really interesting guests. I must get you on soon. And um, <laughs> with quotes as well that, you know, I, I will um, think of the, the phrases that I use in my class. I put them on as quotes to inspire people. So um, yes, Will Life Coach PT on Instagram. And I am on Facebook as well, if you look for Will Everett. Fantastic. Uh, well, I know that Will does many sessions through the week and I'm already looking forward to my next one. Uh, I go to the sessions that he does through Energy Fitness, if you remember, um, Access is all part of the membership, but you can also have personal one-to-ones with Will, so I'm sure if you're interested, you'll find a time and a route that suits you, and I really hope that you'll discover the benefits as I have. Thanks for listening, and Will, thanks so much for being with me today. I really appreciated okay. hearing from you one-to-one. -one. It's been lovely. Yeah, it has. Thank you so much for inviting me on. It's been a pleasure. Maybe come back and tell us in a few months' time how it's going. Thanks, for, thanks for that. And have a Thank great you. week. You too. Thank you.